Boiler alert. Boiler alert. Boiler alert. What's up guys, welcome back to the Manga Zone. This is Master King JC and another new chapter of One Piece has just dropped. So, without further ado, let's just get right into it. This is One Piece chapter 854. What the hell am I doing? And this is another transition chapter, just like last week's. But I appreciate the chapter for two big reasons we'll get, we'll, we'll, we will get into once we get deeper into it. So, the first reason I appreciate this chapter is because it's trying to tie up all the loose ends which are happening the day before the wedding. So, we can't just jump cut straight to the wedding ceremony without clearing up these things. Like, uh, why has no one tried to capture Luffy and Nami and Jinbei after they escaped? Uh, why is no one trying to get Pe uh, Pedro or anyone else? Like, we can't just leave all these little things that happen in Whole Cake Chateau you know, just lying around. So, first things first, um, Brooke is in some pretty hot water right now, man. Like, oh shit, Brooke, 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 Brooke. So, not only was he defeated by Big Mom, he's now her fucking personal skeleton doll. He's, she's just gonna hang on to him wherever she goes. So, I kinda understand her reasoning too, because think about it. If you have an enemy who can at least harm your strongest enemy, army the homies with his ability you don't want him to just be stuck in one place you want to keep him close by so it sucks to be brooke right now but hey man at least you know at least she's not gonna kill you man so there's that <laughs> um actually uh we actually started a chapter with jim May and nami trying to escape and these are some funny incidents where nami accidentally electrocutes chopper which is kind of funny i guess <laughs> and now they're in the mirror world so this Pretty much confirms the theory I mentioned last week where the mirror world is now going to be the base of operations and only safe haven for the rescue team. So we learn in this chapter that Jinbei did in fact, it's confirmed, Jinbei did in fact withdraw from the relay. He didn't actually let it spin though, he just withdrew from taking it. And he knew then and there that the relay smelled of death and ill will. So even though Big Mom did protect Fishman Island, he couldn't go through with the relay because it was pretty much rigged for him to die. And Brulé confirms it, you know, saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course the Brulé is rigged. And, you know, any invaders or pirates who are willing to leave from Big Mom's alliance all have to be subjected to that Brulé. And, you know, of course they die. So that's fucked up, and that's pretty fucked up with Big Mom. But it kind of makes sense, though. Invaders. You don't want them to just come in willy nilly out of your territory and think, oh, she's so soft, she let us go because we just spin through lane and we got lucky. No, you want them out. And pirates who live in your alliance, yeah, I can kind of see Big Mom like that. Like, Big Mom's not a good person, guys. I, I feel like there's a, there's a group of people who still believe Big Mom is good, but here's the thing, she's not evil. She is a morally gray character where her alliance is ambiguous she's not supposed to be cut and dry good and evil that's the whole point of big mom's character and we see that when we transition to the room where she's talking to put in and you know even though brooke's there they're just caught they're just casually having a conversation because you know brooke can't give him any harm or anything like that so brooke finally realizes that put in is fucking twisted good um so uh put in tells big mom that she shot rage you because she was getting a little bit too nosy and big mom starts to worry but she said no 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 i just shot her in the leg and i erased her memory and big mom does have a right to be worried because she's the bride um and it's something that happens to her you know uh the entire wedding ceremony plan gets fucked up and big mom does confirm that she does plan to kill the straw hats after the ceremony but she also confirmed that she is definitely going to kill the vin smokes during the ceremony and she gives this really long-winded almost like you can hear the cackling in her voice as she's going over the way she's going to execute this plan. Where, when Sanji un removes the veil from Puddin's head during the ceremony, he'll see her third eye. He'll be taken back a bit, like, oh, Puddin Swan. And, she <laughs> and she'll take out her gun, shoot him in the brain, which I will say that one panel was really graphic, even though it was pretty much black and white it was very graphic too but i do like it <laughs> and that would be the signal for the rest of the big mom pirates to pull out their guns and shoot down the entire bit smoke family 
very gruesome, very Red Wedding-esque. So, Big Mom definitely does plan to kill the Vince Smokes. Now, a lot of people are coming, coming to the conclusion that, oh yeah, Big Mom has to be dealt with. Like, she is completely utterly evil. She's going to kill the Vince Smokes. Let's not forget, the Vince Smokes at this point in time, with the exception of Reiju, have all been pinned as being complete and total douchebags. Uh, Judge, he's a jerk, he's an asshole, he's a terrible father. Um, Ichiji, Niji, Yoji, do I, have to, do I even have to get into them? They are completely, utterly, like, twisted, like, heartless, empathetic individuals. Now, granted, they didn't want to be born that way, but it is what it is. Um, so, at this point, it's not like the Vizmokes are, like, innocent, you know, outright. They've killed people, they're war criminals, they're known as the quote-unquote evil army. So, yeah, while it's fucked up, uh, the Vizmokes aren't, like, they're not, like, you know, they're not, they're not there for us to, to be worried about them. They're not bastions of goodness and triumph and all that is right and true or some shit like that. Now, yeah, she says she's going to kill... The Straw Hats after the ceremony, but by then I'm pretty sure the Straw Hats will be long gone. And this brings me up to my next point where I want to say people think Big Mom is going to be defeated in this arc. I still don't think she's going to be defeated in this arc. Now, I do believe the wedding ceremony plan is going to go awry because, of course, Sanji knows about it, uh, Raju knows about it. So, something's going to go awry with the entire plan. And also, there is no mention of Capone. In this entire assassination plan so Capone still has a chance to come in and disrupt everything so that's still something to keep an eye out for brain eye out for something I don't know um, next we move on to uh, where Sanji is so Sanji's pretty much chilling in the hallway the guards go by his room but the fucking Nasu Nasu guy is in his bed sleeping I don't know why they're gonna kill him in the morning when they find out but whatever <laughs> um, so um, now that uh, now that Sanji in the hallway, this part kind of disappointed me because I know a lot of individuals have been stating they have been unhappy with the way Sanji has been so forthcoming with sacrificing himself. And granted, I just recently rewatched Philip Mark, so I just realized it's really in Sanji's nature to try to sacrifice himself like that way. But the fact that he doesn't have a plan, it seems. It seems his plan is to go through with the wedding. And just let himself die with the Vince Smokes. I was hoping Sanji, after hearing about the assassination, after hearing that Reiju wanted to go through with it, was going to come up with some type of plan to save Reiju. But it seemed like, initially, from his thoughts, he seemed like he was wanting to go through with it. And he's telling himself to forget about the Straw Hats. And I'm thinking, Sanji, why are you why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? You know you can. And it's I know some people are upset about it because it seems like it, I've been hearing so many complaints that this is very like ramen situation in any lobby. And yes, it is similar, but this the nuances are what make it completely different from her exact situation. And but this right here, Sanji, just not without a plan now. Not until Bobby shows up, which. I don't know where Bobby came from. Uh, he shows up, tries to eat the meat from out of, you know, the, the picnic, picnic basket. Ho, 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 boo, boo. There's another picnic basket. <laughs> and um, Sanji just decks him, just kicks the hell out of him. And I was worried there because I thought, oh, shit, Bobby got one shot in. But no, he he's still conscious. So, And Sanji asks himself, what the hell am I doing? Because he doesn't know. He's so morally conflicted right now. He doesn't even know what the hell he's doing. So he's making a run for it. And... This part, I kind of wasn't too happy with because it's kind of ruined the entire plan, or at least the seeming coincidence of Sanji, of the guards checking Sanji's room to see that he was asleep in his room. But now he's running away, Bobby sees him, I think the guards are going to come too as well, so that ruins everything. Now the guards are going to know and Bobby's going to know, hey, Sanji's out of his room, he's escaped, he's running away. I don't know where this is going to go, but I have faith in Oda that this is going to lead exactly to where I think it's going to lead. Or at least where the end of the chapter insinuates it's going to lead. And that's going to be where Sanji meeting Luffy at the hill place to give him the food in the basket. So, that whole thing with Sanji and Luffy is going to be wrapped up. Or at least it's going to be, it's going to be 
it's not going to be left on a bad note until the wedding. So I expect Sanji to meet Luffy. He's going to give him the basket, of course. That's We've all predicted uh, Sanji was going to give Luffy the basket full of food because it's the same way he prepares the food for them on the Thousand Sunny. So uh, not next chapter, at least before the wedding, uh, Luffy's going to have the food he needs to eat. Now, whether he gets involved in the wedding ceremony or not, I don't know because I kind of hope Luffy doesn't because I kind of like him being left out of conflict, but I definitely want to see where things go from now on. So overall, this is an okay chapter. It's a transition chapter again because the chapter really is just there to tie up all the loose ends before the wedding happens. This is why I like, this is one of the things I like about Oda as a writer. He doesn't want to just leave things hanging when they're crucial to the arc and they lead to many plot holes. He needs to make sure that things are smooth before we transition next to the next segment of the arc. So hopefully we'll get to the wedding, if not next chapter, at least this month soon. Anyway guys, this has been Master King JC. Let me know what you thought about the chapter down below. If you do like these reviews, be sure to subscribe for more and follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with what I am doing. But anyway guys, keep on keeping on. I'll catch you guys again next time. Peace.